I'm here with Oko Rolofsson, um, Senior Partner and Global Leader, McKinsey Oil and Gas Practice. Good afternoon, Oko. Um, just looking at this week's IPCC report, it seems to imply a much faster decarbonisation than widely anticipated until now. I mean, do you think this is achievable and how should the industry interpret this signal? Well, the um, report really points to a very significant uh, decarbonisation and we think that is not achievable under the current policy frameworks, regulatory frameworks and something very profound would need to change in countries but also in the way governments give investment signals to companies. And we've seen more and more oil and gas companies kind of looking to diversify into renewables. Do you think that this will be a trend that will continue in the years ahead? I think we will see more of that. I mean, in a sense, uh, power is growing four times as fast than oil and gas demand. And within that, almost all of the growth comes from renewable power. And um, I would expect more investments to go to renewable power, but I also expect oil and gas companies to move into, let's say, the transition between molecules and electrons. So not pure power, but also storage and uh, heat from uh, power, so to say. Mm -hmm. And um, do you think we'll see peak oil demand any time soon? And how do you think this would, the industry could rea react to this challenge? Yeah, that's the big question. Um, we actually don't think peak oil demand is happening anywhere soon. We, we think more in the mid-30s. Uh, but actually when it happens, it would be more of a flattening of demand rather than a sharp drop. Uh, and even if you believe in a more accelerated scenario, the industry would need a lot of new oil before 2030, 2035, and even in our more aggressive scenarios that points to 35, 40 million barrels a day of new oil production that we haven't sanctioned yet by 2035. So still the need to continue investing then? Absolutely. Even the more accelerated scenarios, yeah. you need to continue to invest. And looking at natural gas, I mean, it's long touted as a kind of bridge fuel, but do you see it as uh, playing a role as a destination fuel equally? Yeah, so I think bridge fuel or destination fuel, that's sort of a time element. I mean, wood and coal for cooking is maybe also has been a bridge fuel in the past, but I think for the foreseeable future we'll, we'll be using gas. And if you look hundreds of years from now, maybe it was a bridge fuel in hindsight, but for the foreseeable future I think we'll be using a lot of gas. And just finally, I just wonder if you could share your thoughts on hydrogen's use in the future. I mean, do you think that that's going to be important going forward? I think it could actually be a big game changer, uh, especially if you think about the IPCC report and the role that hydrogen could play in decarbonizing steel production, uh, chemical production, heating in the industrial uh, environments. Uh, but then, of course, you would, do, you would need some real changes in regulation in terms of how we produce hydrogen and how cost effective we can do it. Mm. Presumably that would be kind of closely aligned with the kind of interest of gas companies as a source of hydrogen potentially? Uh, absolutely, and then the question is, are you gonna get hydrogen from electricity or are you gonna get your hydrogen as sort of a blue hydrogen with, with CCS? Uh, and that's a technology that's possible but would need to scale up massively. So that's an area where I would imagine gas companies could invest. Fantastic, well thank you very much. My pleasure.